and I'm live, live, live. How are you guys? Good evening. Uh, oh boy, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, I gotta tell you about my day. Um, I should be in bed. I'm really tired, but I'm really amped. And I had to make some phone calls when I got back here. And, uh, Save has been a little bit stressed and, um, Well, Keeper's been without me all day. Leno, I was just talking to Trunk Monkeys. I'm like, I got to call Leno because there's something getting in my head again. Remember the last time we spoke, Leno? Okay. I got another question for you along the same lines. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that with anybody else. But so anyway, um, I wanted to hang out around the bonfire and definitely, thank you, Kimberly Wood. She think there's something in that wall. What wall? So there was a bonfire tonight and I could have fellowshipped. And um, instead I came back here to attend to Seva. Um, She was stressed, meowing at the wall. I don't, Kimberly, sweetheart, I love you. What do you mean? She think there's something in the wall, in that wall. Can you explain? Forgive me. Oh, right? That was the first thing I thought too, Kimberly, was is there something in the wall, right? Or is she sensing something in the pipes? Last night when I was sleeping, um, I had everything turned off. And uh, usually I go to sleep with you two playing in the background. And um, it's to my ministries, like Saturday nights. I can't stay awake, but I can stay awake long enough to turn YouTube on to Now You See TV with the Caracos and John Pounder and John Hall and um, Dan Bondini. Um, but then I go right back to sleep. But last night I was like, you know, I had a long drive. I'm here, this, that, and the other things going on. And I decided to like turn everything off and just charge my cell phone. And my cell phone's going dead, so I need to charge it again. And um, excuse me, I pace a lot. Normally. <laughs> no wonder why I'm so skinny. And plus winter outside. I shiver off any weight. Weight for me is like money. I lose it faster than I can get it. So where was I? Um, save a talking to the wall. So then I was, uh, I turned everything down and I heard like that buzzing sound. It wasn't like really a buzzing. It was like a high-pitched alarm going off somewhere or it sounded like not totally like the ringing in your ears but like you could hear an electrical buzz whether it was from the fire alarm that's like connected all the way back to the main office or whether it's it sounded like a, an electrical type buzz or like alarm could have been something in the fridge but it was really high pitched. And in the past, when I've heard stuff like that, people are like, I don't hear anything, I don't hear anything. I'm like, how can you not hear that? I can't even sleep. I was thinking about going in uh, like a muted TV where you still kind of hear that buzzing or that humming in the background. Yeah, yeah, similar to that. So. Maybe there is something in the wall. Then I thought maybe she could be stressed. Um, she's been a little bit stressed. Because my schedule's changed a few times in the past nine months. And because it's changed, you know, maybe I haven't gotten to spend enough time with Zeta. So I wanted to tell you guys about Tom Dunn speaking. Wow, he is an incredible speaker, to be honest with you. And... Um, very powerful. Um, I would have taken notes, but I only had markers with me. I didn't have a pen. Um, and I usually do take notes. But this time I thought, well, maybe I can sit back and just listen to Tom. 
See, I like when Tom gets up there and he starts preaching like he does. Like, oh, wow. Like the way he speaks at conferences. I would love to see him do like YouTube videos like that because it is very powerful. Um, he talked about, you know, not acting in anger. You can be angry, but it's what you do when you're angry that can be a sin or not. Um, and, and coming and dealing with others. Um, we talked about Luke, Matthew, um, Holy Bible scriptures in there. Um... And he had charts up. Forgive me, like, give me a second. I have to think because I'm trying to, like, rewind his speech a little bit. Um, what else impacted me that he spoke about? Uh, I'm drawing blanks. Forgive me. I'm getting tired. I'm getting very tired. I didn't even take Dramamine yet, but I'm going to take Dramamine just to ensure that I sleep well because... Last night I kept waking up, it seemed like every 30 minutes. Um, but then finally after a couple of hours it stopped and I slept straight. But that's because of my Coleman sleeping bag. I love Coleman now. Um, let me see, what else did Tom speak about? There was something else, and I'm drawing a blank. So about the anger. Oh, this was huge. For me, it was huge. I needed to hear this because uh, just a lot goes on. Um, now what was I saying? <laughs> I forgot again because uh, I saw my chat go off, and I looked at my chat, and now I can't remember what I just remembered. That I forgot. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's okay not to like someone. Okay, you don't want to hate anyone. You don't want to speak ill or bad of anyone. And there's some situations that are tough where you have to confront people and you always hope for a good conclusion. But uh, it's okay not to like someone. So, like, if you have a personality that does not mix with someone else's personality and you just don't like them because of that, that is okay. And that in itself is not a sin. Now, I've struggled with that because of things that transpired in 2019 and things that I still speak now. And these people must be like, oh my God, I know Holly Bagley is talking about me. Well, actually, no, you don't because I don't use names. Number one, I know the law. Um, I gotta keep my train of thought and I just lost it. Oh no, hi, E-C-N-W-W-F. <laughs> so I flex my muscles today, AR-15. I can't wait for it tomorrow. I can't wait for skeet shooting to shoot a shotgun. That'll be fun. It'll be my first time. Shh. I'm going to be like, this is my first time. It's a Kodak moment. You have got to record it. <laughs> Please. So I already started asking people if I could take pictures and post them. Like, I mean, I look at these people. I'm like, you guys are famous. Yes, I want a picture with you. <laughs> Go lay down right now. Go. I know she's excited, but then. Go. Good girl. Lay down. I love you. And stay. I get excited. She gets excited. <laughs> I'm excited. So, um... Yeah, so it's okay not to like people. It's okay. It's not a sin if you don't like someone. So if I don't like somebody, 
It's not a sin. It's okay. And people can't get pissed off. They can't go, oh my God, Holly, that's slander. And we're going to get an attorney because you don't like us. You know. <laughs> I'm like doing imitations now. So, yeah. Um, and that's really important. It's okay if, if you can look at people and say, I love you. I know that you love Jesus. You know that I love Jesus. But it's okay if we go down uh, different paths and different walks. We don't have to like each other. And then there's just some people you don't like them that, and they don't even have Jesus. So... Yes, there is. Hey, Jeff, it's good to see you. There's a first for everything. So, that'll be my first. Uh, this is, like, this has happened to me before, but I kind of cowered down doing it, like, with Casper McLeod. But then on the second time, when I saw him in Georgia, I went to visit him last year in the summer. I told him about the dream, and I sent him a picture of the dream and stuff. Or did I? Oh, no, maybe I forgot to send it to him. I'll email him again. I'll just send it to him in a text message and say, I'm sorry, Casper. But um, so I had a dream. and It was a two-part dream. The second part was what was pertinent. The second part is regarding this conference and tactical training that I'm at now. And I drew a picture of it. And I'm not done with the picture because there were three to five people in it. But the main three, I think, were Coach, Coach, Mrs. Coach, and Dave, David, P. And um, But there were others with us. It was a group of people, but like three to five people stood out to me. And there were women in the group, and that's why Mrs. Coach stood out to me. But, um, see, like, I have dreams and visions. Tom started touching on spiritual gifts, and right off the bat, I was like, whoa, wait a second. Okay, two things. Abba gives me dreams and visions he always has. Um, I have spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts out of the blue. When he taps my shoulder and just says, do this, and I do it. But um, with my dreams and visions, first and foremost, the biggest thing he has ever shown me is that the Holy Bible is true. He has shown me things in Revelation that I will see with my own eyes in this lifetime. You know, these set of eyes that are looking back at you right now through a camera lens, computer screen. Um, so I'll see, like, geez, Yeshua return. I'll see the two witnesses, the three angels. I've already seen the lady in the... We've already seen the lady in the dragon. Um, but then the other thing about my dreams is that a lot of it is Abba showing me in my dreams, what's going to happen in my life, and then it manifests in this world. Now, I'm always seeking and searching for Heavenly Abba, but, um, you know, even though maybe I, uh, I have found him, it hasn't made me stop searching and looking for him and loving him and wanting to be closer to him. So, um, in my dreams, Heavenly Abba shows me Holy Spirit filled and led people. Now, I can't always exactly tell their facial features or know their names. But see, what I can what I can see is Yeshua shining through them. And that's how I know them, is because Yeshua is shining through them. You know, be the light of the world. And that's what Yeshua gives us. Um, Joshua, also known as Adam, I need to reach out to you and send you an email. It's been a long time since we spoke, and people are wishing you well, and I really want to have a chance to say that, but I'm not home. I don't know when I'm going to do that, and you're probably never going to see this video, sadly, but, um, what else can I tell you? Um, there was one point when Tom was speaking that 
I got warm and I started like nodding out. I'm like, oh no. And I started shifting around in my chair and I'm sitting front row. And I never sit front row. I'm always sitting back row. Because in the back row, all the cool people always sit in the back row. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you the truth, but yeah. All the cool people always sit in the back row. <laughs> I was in the front row. <laughs> and um, he's a very powerful powerful speaker and I really appreciate that so um, I didn't get to I got to say hello to Tom but I didn't get to talk to you too much I well yeah actually I did I'm like so how was your ride and he's like oh it was good it was an hour long I'm like yeah mine was seven <laughs> but uh other than that, I kind of uh, stuck by Coach and Mrs. Coach Larry, the chef. La Chefette Halle was taking lessons from the real chef, Larry. Seriously. And, um, boy, I said to Coach, I know why you have Larry Cook. <laughs> um. I got to see uh, Jesus, King of Kings, uh, where they made the big sign and laid it on their lawn. Um, I got to see Bob. <laughs> Chad. He's awesome, Chad. Estevez. Estev I'll get back to it. <laughs> Estes. Estevez. I'll get back to it. I'm bad with names, and oh, I met a whole bunch of other really cool people. I got to meet James Pollock, and uh, that's cool. Um, I went to meet his mom, but I think I missed him, so I feel really bad about that, and I really want to make a point to meet Mrs. Mama Bear, James Pollock, <laughs> and um, it's just... Uh, it's really great here. It's really great. I wanted to stay and hang out uh, by the bonfire and see the full moon because the clouds finally went away. And I was half tempted to drive back over, but I'm so tired. And I really wanted to make sure that uh, my fur babies are settled in. But what an amazing day. If I could live like this every day, I totally would. Did I roast marshmallows? I didn't stay long enough to roast marshmallows. I really wanted to, but I have to wake up at 6, and I want to be sharp and on point tomorrow, and I want to make sure that, like, my fur babies are feeling comfortable, so when I'm off shooting weapons, um, you know, I know they're all right, because, you know, the cat kind of takes traveling a lot harder than the dog. The dog loves car rides, you know. The cat, it's weird, because when Sava was a little kitten, I always would take her for car rides. She would like, cut. I used to walk my cat without a leash, okay? So I'd be like, car ride, car ride. And she'd come trotting behind me right up into the car and we'd go for a car ride. She'd get out of the car, we'd be somewhere else. She'd walk around and people would be like, you're gonna lose your cat. I'm like, no, I'm not, she's my shadow. You don't understand. She found me, she came to me, she's mine. <laughs> I'm keeping her, I'm glad she found me. Her name is Safe. Save a, like save a kitten, but really she saved a Holly's heart. She's the first thing I loved and keeper keeps me and uh, she taught me how to pray. And now here the three of us are loving Yeshua HaMashiach with all we got. Yes, oh look at this, oh my goodness. Oh now they're gonna play cute. You're gonna be cute now. Oh, you get look. What is that? You're fi you're getting old. You need a facelift. Shh, shh, you stop it. No, don't you. Shh. <laughs> yes, keeper knows sign language. Keeper knows how to say no in sign. Or she knows no in sign language. You're glad the cat doesn't have your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> 
myself. I love you, I love you, I love you. Glad you're having fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to see her? Here. I kid you not, the whole family's there. Look, say hi, Steve. <laughs> Say hi, honey bunnies. Hi, honey bunnies. She got a little stressed, you can see. But we're okay now. We are okay. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So she's here. Yep. And look. There I am, the hostess with the most is broadcasting to you live from Nork. Ohio on HTV, on the HTV network. <laughs> she is, she is soft and squishy. Wait, you're not supposed to look at me, you're supposed to look at her. She's soft and squishy. Say hi, Ava, Ava. Okay, instead of seeing your butt, let's see your face. Hi, honey. Hey, look up here. There you are. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad they're here with me. I'm really glad they're here with me. This makes me so happy. Because you know that um, part in the Holy Bible when it says there's going to come the day when Abba tells us that we have to flee and we're not going to have time to go back into our house and we're not going to have to go we're not going to have time to go back and warn anyone and if we do it's going to be to our doom we're going to have to move when he says move well if I'm here and they're there I'm going back for them well rather than going back for them we need to stay together, and we should stay together. Why should we be separated? Well, because they're animals and I'm a human, but... I mean, it's a family nonetheless. So what if... <laughs> anyway, not about any of the what-ifs, but... Uh, anyway, if they're here with me, then... Well, I don't have to go back. There's no reason to go back or look back, so there's every reason for me to always bring them with me. If we're always together, then I don't have to go back. So, but uh, I have to say Tom made an amazing, an amazing um, speech today. I wish he would do that on his YouTube videos. I like on his YouTube videos when he does, um, like when it's just him. I'm not trying to slight anyone and everybody's going to take it like a slight and I get sick and tired of people doing that. I like when Tom Dunn, like, is sitting there and he's talking to you and whatnot. His speech tonight was really, really good. And um, I wanted to make note of that because a lot of it did hit home. Um, and I could see Satan trying to harp on, because see, Satan has two horns, right? You got the horn of fear and you got the horn of self-doubt. Well, he's harping on the self-doubt. You know, with the spiritual gifts. He's always harping on the spiritual gifts that Heavenly Abba gives me. And I'm humble, okay? But, um, I don't know. I thought it was, it was good. So I just wanted to, um, make, make this video and, yeah, it was really, oh, um, so tomorrow evening, because the day will be spent learning tactical training. Addie, I love you. Smurfer girl, sweetheart, how are you? I haven't been in my chat. Sorry, I'll go back and look. I'm trying to think of how the day went. Well, tomorrow it's mainly going to, going to be tactical training. And then in the evening it'll be spiritual warfare. And Tom will be speaking again. And he'll talk about freedom deliverances. You know, the difference between demonic possession and demonic oppression. Now... I have to say this, and I learned something very valuable, and I'm really grateful. 
I word things a different way. And I have to learn to let people finish their sentences. Three quarters of the time, I already know what they're going to say before they finish. I already know what they're going to say within the first two words of them beginning a sentence. But there are those times and those valuable times that come along where I really do need to let people finish saying what they're saying. I word things in a different fashion and style. But I can appreciate it because... You know, there's sometimes I just can't always understand everything. And we're both meeting at the same end. Just so I could appreciate that. So I don't know. I really, uh, I'm really appreciating this time looking at uh, focusing on Yeshua, looking on the inside of myself. And, um, enjoying everybody that's around me in the fellowship and people I get to reunite with. Um, and uh, the new people that I'm making friends with. And I'll be in my chat room soon because I'm going to end this. Um, wow, today was just so incredible. Do you know what happened? <laughs> I'm going to start crying. Um, I'm going to have to go back through my chat room, otherwise I'm going to get distracted. What was I going to tell you? Oh, don't draw a blank. Heavenly Abba. Draw a blank. What was I going to say? That's it. I lived in the moment. I lived in the moment today. There was nothing from the past haunting me or having its claws reach forward into the future and clutch onto me. There was nothing from the past bothering me, hanging on, hovering over, throwing its clutches into me, nothing. I lived in the moment. Everything I did, everyone I spoke to, I'm living in the moment and I'm enjoying myself. And then not only second, seconds and minutes, but then all of a sudden hours, hours start going by. And at one point, I actually, I actually stopped and thought to myself, wait a minute, I just went four hours without thinking about this or that or... I just went four hours without feeling oppressed or without something hanging over me. I just went like four hours living in the moment, absorbing the moment, saturating myself in the moment, enjoying the company, focus on, uh, focusing on what they're saying, not only hearing their voice, but listening to their words, being attentive, but being fully there and living fully in the moment not being like half foot worried about what's going on back at home with this person and that person and then one foot here at the conference you know like when i got ordained august 2018 and then the following month was that tragic event when i got ordained august 2018 i got one foot in the past i'm thinking about what's going on at home and how I would have been here for the whole conference, but home said this and home did that. And now only I have hours and now here I got another step forward in the conference and I'm there at the conference and I'm thinking about the conference, but it was like this give and take. And that was in 2018. And now here we are 2020 and I feel fully blessed because I'm living in the moment and I'm fully here. I'm not looking back on the plow while trying to push forward but also this is the biggest thing I feel set free set free okay now I've been delivered of this and that and the other thing but in a general sense of what I'm talking about I feel set free I feel set free from the past I feel set free from myself um, I feel I feel like I can break free if I stop hindering myself and if I stop taking things out of Heavenly Abba's hand. I could just break free of that habitual 
sin. You get delivered, I'm speaking generally, excuse me, you get, for instance, you get delivered of the demon, but now you need to be set free of the habitual sin that you have taken up because you were either possessed or oppressed or exposed to something you shouldn't like. Okay, guys, I don't mean to be rude. I gotta look. David, I love you. How are you? I was praying for you last night while I was driving here with Anna and Seller. I am so happy to see you. Oh, David, no, I want to do more for you. I want to do more for you. People do a lot for me, David. Like, as you can see. Honestly, so I think that because of all the great things that people do for me, I should be doing more for others. And I'd like to be able to do more for you. And I love you so much, David. I'm so happy to see you. I had a major dream from Heavenly Abba come true today. And for you to be in my chat room, I'm so honored and humbled. And please give Kieran my best. I had no idea his Facebook account was shut down. He's a pioneer. I look up to him. I follow his videos. Although now the problem is, is that YouTube never gives a notification. So let me get back to my chat room here. Oh, Sava's having a tough time. Well, she's fine now because she found a cubby hole, right? You're fine now. You're going to stop meowing. But she's kind of stressed. So I think I'll uh, say good night to you guys. First, I want to see my chat room, though. Why are you asking? Tom Don from Through the Block. He's incredible when he speaks. Oh, my goodness. Through the Block, he's on YouTube. He's got a channel. You should check him out. You might like, you might really like it. Um, some of the other people that he has on his panel speak about the supernatural. Excuse me, so do I, Holly? I do that sometimes. I get impatient, right? I'm so happy to see you guys. Forgive me. Okay, this is what's going on. Save us stressing again, right? We're back at the wall. Okay. Come here, honey bunnies. It's all right. Okay, guys, forgive me. I'm not going to waste your time uh, having a look at my pets. Good morning, or good evening. Good morning, Casper. It's great to see you. I hope you're doing all right. I remember our previous conversations, and I hope you're all right. Melvi, I love you. I love you. Vaborg, it's great to see you again. Yeah, so um, I need to go talk to a man about extending my stay because apparently on Sunday you guys have a date with the hostess, with the mostess, and if I can run a live stream YouTube video, I will. I heard electronics don't work well. I hope I don't kill my data plan. If I do, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to take you guys to the Nephilim Mounds. You come to see me? Yes. I got to save in front of me and keep her behind me. I'm going to take you guys to the Nephilim Mounds. And we're going to look around. <laughs> Jeff. Okay, everybody. Jeff is joking. Do not be alarmed. Okay, if I really thought that Jeff did that, we wouldn't be friends. <laughs> he doesn't do that. All of us have uh, different senses of humor. Oh, yeah, I'm going to become a comedian. Oh, get this. Before That was uh, Keeper. Before I go, uh, I'm going to become a comedian. And when my siblings in Christ have a division, I'm going to become one of those comedians that, like, makes fun of that you, you know what I'm going to have to get back to this there was um, a conversation I had with someone earlier 
today and um, I was being a wise cracker about some things but I'm not going to be a wise cracker right now I'm going to save it for later at a more appropriate time but uh, you know guys I think as um, siblings of Christ if we don't get along um, we just move on and we both sets of parties move on with Abba um, but I think overall we um, I need to stay humble I need to keep a sense of humor I get very emotional and I take things to heart and I wear my heart on my sleeve and to be a part of something means a lot to me so when you make me a part of your group you might not see me all the time as you'd like to see me but listen I'm a part of that group I'm there I want to be a part of it like at this conference and training like I can't stop asking enough like can I do anything can I do anything <laughs> can I cook can I do this can I do that like first off I'm so happy to be here but like secondly I love you guys so much I spend like five days a week online with you and now uh, here you are and <laughs> I'm so happy to be here I'm so happy that Abba got me here I'm so happy he led me here um, I think I'm inside of his love and I'm really humbled and um, honestly guys there's no other place I'd rather be no other place I'd rather be so on that note since I'm starting to tear up and I know I'm tired I'm gonna head out thank you for being here along with me for this experience um means the world it's literally literally a dream come true literally a heaven sent dream from heavenly Abba come true to be here so sweet dreams, everyone. I love you a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. i see you in the morning. That's what my grandma and papa would always say to me right before they put me down to go to sleep. So, because I love them so much, and now I love you guys so much, I wanted to say it for you. Good night. And thanks for coming along with me. This is such an exciting weekend. And it's only Friday. I still got... I still got days ahead of me. It's only the first day. <laughs> I gotta get my rest to have energy to be excited for tomorrow. <laughs> I love you. V, I'll see you later. I love you guys. I love you, I love you, I love you. I'll be praying with and for you this evening. Have a good one. <laughs>